Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Blo oh, I heard if you say it three times, she returns as a Horror Nights icon. Bloody Mary was the original event icon created for Halloween Horror Nights Orlando's 18th event in 2008. The event, titled Reflections of Fear, would have the icon based on the legend of Bloody Mary, but this time Universal would create an elaborate backstory that was unique to the event. For Halloween Horror Nights 18, we knew we needed more horror content than we'd ever had before in the previous 17 events. Bloody Mary is one of the most widely recognized urban legends of all time. If you stand in front of a mirror and chant her name three times, you will bring her forth. The Bloody Mary character exists in folklore legend, consisting of a ghost or phantom conjured to reveal the future, said to appear in a mirror when her name is chanted multiple times. Many different names and versions of the legend have existed throughout the years, and she would be used in every kind of media, but Universal would feature a whole new backstory, personality, and name for the character. Introduced on the Halloween Horror Nights website on July 1st, 2008, visitors on the site would enter her office and read her journal as it appeared in 1958. The journal was slowly updated during July and August with the story of the character's descent into madness. That character's name was Dr. Mary Agana. Well, this year is all about urban legends and myths and folklore and fairy tales. You know, kind of the things you kind of sort of know or heard as a kid. But we tied all together with the queen of urban legends, Bloody Mary. Mary Worthington was a school teacher in the small town of Cary, Ohio, who was killed in 1908 as a result of a Halloween prank orchestrated by the school handyman and six students. The schoolmaster had found his schoolhouse in complete disarray with blood and shards of glass all across the room. Although suspected to have been murdered, her body was never found. The journal of Dr. Mary Ogana was updated on the website to give details about the year's icon. Mary Ogana had recently received many valuable heirlooms that originally belonged to her grandmother, Mary Worthington, at the wishes of her late mother who had recently passed away. In mid-1958, Mary received a letter from the National Association of Mental Health that informed her that the board members have denied funding for an immersive fear therapy program as it was deemed too unorthodox. As feared by the board, Dr. Agana proceeded with her plans regardless and opened her own facility, living fearlessly, specialized treatments for fear-based ailments. Over the course of the next few months, Mary sees several patients and discovers new ways to cure them of their fears and phobias. Each of these received a backstory page on the constantly updated Horror Nights website. The backstory for Mary was so in-depth, it tied into every aspect of the event this year. Each house was linked to the cases Dr. Mary Agana was involved with. The first, Eileen Harrell, daughter of one of the children responsible for Mary Worthington's disappearance, was an illustrator for children's books and was most well known for Atomic Comics Volume Number 24. She made an appointment at the clinic to cure her fear of myths and legends, particularly the Headless Horseman. Dr. Agana made Eileen approach a table next to a mirror and explores her reaction to a severed human head that she had borrowed from a local medical class. Eileen had uncontrolled hysteria, and as a result, she was hospitalized and medicated in a private facility. Eileen's case was linked to the house in Sprung Tent One called The Hallow. And the backstory for this is that you're actually going on a spaceship, the NSO Columbus 1492 that was lost in 2030 and then reappeared some years later. Next was Lieutenant Von Stiebler, the son of German-American Admiral George Von Stiebler also one of the children involved in Mary Worthington's disappearance. He had a fear of the infamous legend, Bloody Mary. Wanting to be an astronaut but unable to pass the test, Admiral Von Stiebler sends his son to Mary's clinic against advice to try and cure a fear of visions of undefined symbols he believes would lead to a catastrophic event. Strapped to the seat, he is forced to relive the fishing trip where the symbols first appeared. The slideshow becomes too much and he uses a fountain pen and paper he was given to carve symbols into his own body. Again, he is hospitalized and Dr. Agana keeps the pen as a memento. She discovers the audio feedback is too distracting and she merely likes watching them, specifically through a one-way mirror. The house connected to this case was Interstellar Terror, and she would appear in the static following one of the captain's messages on the bridge. In fact, Bloody Mary would have a cameo role in each of the houses. 
Charlie McPherson, a photographer who was fired in 1955, went freelance, and one of his later jobs is to take pictures of Frank Bennett's infidelity against his wife, Diane Bennett. The person who hired him is a private investigator called Boris Schuster. Charlie checks into Mary's clinic to cure his fear of seeing ghostly images in his photography, as well as his fear of the dark and enclosed spaces. Dr. Agana placed Charlie in a glass box with limited air and gave him the choice to stay in the box or open the lid and face his fear of the surroundings, which include a dark room filled with flashing bulbs of ghostly images. Charlie chooses not to open the lid and dies due to lack of oxygen becoming the first victim of Dr. Agana. This death though starts a series of events that would shape Mary's future. She discovered her own fear was of death and she would use the deaths of her patients to try and cure her own fear. Charlie would be linked to the house Dead Exposure. The Charlie in this version of the house though was a parallel version to the one seen by Mary. This one saw ghoulish images every time his flashbulb went off. This version of Charlie was turned into a zombie at the end of the house and would reappear in Zombie Geddon and Hallowed Past at later events. He was also rumoured to be linked to Emily from Halloween Horror Night 28's Dead Exposure sequel. The next patient, Johnny Deedle, is the son of Jim Deedle, again involved in the disappearance of Mary Worthington. He opened and ran the Butcher Buck Bar in 1935. After his father mysteriously dies, he moves in with his uncle and reads a copy of Volume 24 of Atomic Comics Creatures, which was illustrated by the first patient, Eileen Harrell. The comic focuses on the invasion of alien-like creatures that killed a man suspiciously by the name of Jim Deedle. As a result of the book, he develops a fear of creatures living under his bed. Johnny sees Dr. Mary Agana in 1958 to try and stop his nightmare of being strangled by a tentacle creature. She puts a bag over his head and ties him in rope to seem as if he is being strangled by the creature. He is forced to balance on a table and continue to be strangled by the ropes or step off into the abyss he fears. He chooses to step off, which results in him being hung by a noose around his neck. The house related to this case was called Creatures, where you entered the Butcher Buck Bar. Diane Bennett was patient number five, also the daughter of one of the students involved in the disappearance. She became afraid of fairy tales that ended in Happily Ever After, which she developed from reading the children's classics books, which were published by Eileen Harrell's company. After she learned her husband had been unfaithful to her, thanks to the investigation by Boris Schuster and Charlie McPherson, to cure this, Mary had her sit on a circle of hypnotized patients transferred from an asylum and ordered them to recite fairy tales to her. If it became too much, Diane had a safe word to end the session, Mary. It became too much and she fell into a fit of hysteria and began to shout the safe word. This word though was the trigger for the patients to attack and kill her. Her case was linked to the house, Scary Tales Once Upon a Nightmare. The entire event has had this shift towards just more design. It is amazing to see how many, just not the, the characters themselves with the prosthetics and the uniqueness of that, but the environments. And defy your fears, I will show you a world where there is no happily ever after. The IP house of the year, Doomsday, tied into the next patient, Thornton Kesterson. This time the son of the handyman who convinced the students to prank Mary Worthington. His son, Thornton, had refused to participate in the prank and hid in a cornfield. As an adult, Thornton became a gem trader who later gained suspicions for having a crooked business when photos by Charlie McPherson caught him smuggling diamonds into the country. He began to develop a fear of strange and unknown bacteria and viruses as well as island cannibals from his travels gem trading. After visiting Dr. Christian Kabouche, a general practitioner at the time to receive a variety of vaccinations, he booked in an appointment with Dr. Agana, not knowing she was the granddaughter of the school teacher his father caused to disappear. She tied him to a chair and drugged him, and knowing about his fear of fire, placed crematorial jets below his legs and back. He was given a safe word and as he began to burn, shouted it, causing the mirrors surrounding the jets to burst, impaling and killing him. We're in the body collectors. Fellas, this is one of eight all-new haunted houses, or mazes as we like to call them at Halloween Horror Nights 18. What we do is totally immerse you as a guest, using film quality sets, state-of-the-art special effects including audio, smoke, and even smells. And then there's the characters who will come at you from every direction with one goal in mind, 
to hear you scream. Dr. Christian Caboosh was linked to the body collector's house due to his fear of dead bodies and surgery. He became a psychiatrist after quitting his job as a surgeon due to these fears and after he had taken a fishing trip with the Von Stieblers, which he documented and was intrigued by his fear of symbols. Christian was the grandson of George Chapman, who was a suspect in the Jack the Ripper case in London and the rumoured founder of the body collector's outfit. Mary, knowing of these fears and wanting revenge on him for being one of the board members who rejected her fear exposure experience, kidnapped him and trapped him in a room filled with mirrors and the dead bodies of her patients. Terrified, he used the safe word and Mary bored through his body with a drill. Boris Schuster, the private investigator hired by Diane Bennett and working with Charlie McPherson, became suspicious when Charlie went missing, discovering he disappeared after making an appointment at the clinic in upstate New York. He began investigating the work of Dr. Organa after more and more people started to disappear. Boris made an appointment for himself for the clinic to find out more. Dr. Mary Organa was never seen in this world again. It was later confirmed that a boxer and former convict was her killer, but what happened during this meeting is unknown. Universal said that in her final experiment, the person broke free from the table while screaming her name. They broke through the one-way mirror Mary used to observe and pulled her through which killed her. The last thing she saw was her own face, and this transformed her into Bloody Mary. Following the incident, Boris created The Collective in order to research this and other paranormal events over the years. Closure to this case, though, was never found. Over the course of these cases being revealed on the website, her writing became sloppier and the office messier, each case proving she was losing more and more of her sanity. Her final journal entry was added and it was revealed as the mirror broke open, she had become Bloody Mary. I see all of your secrets, your desire, your vanity, and your shame. And when the mirror cracks, I see your strength! The paranormal investigation team founded by Schuster, The Legendary Truth, investigated the incident on August 27th, 2008, the 50 year anniversary of Agana's transformation. Some believe the spirit of her grandmother had been gradually possessing her since she inherited those heirlooms in 1958. Mary did not have her own show at the event. It was said to be because it was painful for her to go through the mirror into our world. Each cut on her face represented a time she broke through the mirror, when she was summoned. She did appear at the media opening event though, as the audience chanted her name and she broke through the mirror. I, I would like to thank you all for coming here tonight on what I believe will be an historic evening. You see, this evening culminates years of comprehensive, extensive, and complete research into the world's strangest urban legends. This year, Universal Studios has taken things too far. Bloody Mary! Bloody Mary! Bloody Mary! Who summons me here? It, 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 it is me. I, you took my grandfather 50 years ago. You are not alone. <laughs> She would also have her own house, Reflections of Fear, one of the only times a house had the exact same name as the title for the year's event. Guests would visit Mary's office where both of her personalities made appearances, and both the 1950s and the 2008 office was shown where Mary still tried to kill to cure her fear of death. As well as all the houses tying into the character, so did the scare zones, with dark reflections being where you entered the world of the mirror, asylum in Wonderland where you entered the looking glass to Mary's Wonderland, fractured tales combining the Halloween and fairy tale legends, the schoolhouse where you entered the classroom where the prank went wrong and now Mary possessed everyone inside. <laughs> and what we're doing here at Halloween Horror Nights is we're going to take you into her world and immerse you in it. Halloween Horror Nights 18 was a huge hit, and Bloody Mary was definitely a large part of that. Following the event, Mary was heavily rumoured to return at Halloween Horror Nights 20 with the Icon reunion. While Universal had created Dr. Agana, the rights for Bloody Mary were tied up as they were trademarked. Universal did license the name for the event, but they have yet to do so again, and Bloody Mary is yet to return to any of the Icon reunion events since. 
The trademark is still active and was renewed in January 2018, and it is still offered out to haunted houses to use for a price. So maybe one day we will see Bloody Mary break through that mirror again. Some believe Bloody Mary to be the grandmother, others Dr. Agana herself, and some even a mixture of both. Whichever you think, Bloody Mary was one of the most memorable icons ever created. While the house based on her did not receive great reviews, her story links to every aspect of the event, except the shows, and interaction on the website created one of the most memorable Halloween Horror Nights icons in history. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary comes alive only at Universal's Halloween Horror Nights. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Haunts. Who is your favourite Halloween Horror Nights icon and who would you like to see covered next? For more information on the houses during the 2008 event, take a look at our History of Halloween Horror Nights series. A special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming expeditions and we will see you next time.